So types of essential elements, let's study about that. Essential elements, mobile elements and immobile elements. Wow. So essential elements can be classified into mobile elements and the immobile elements. Let's see. Yes, these are the mobile nutrients. Nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, magnesium, immobile, calcium and sulfur. Once more, NPK and magnesium and here calcium and sulfur. Calcium and sulfur, immobile. Well, let me show you. You might have experienced this. When there is something left, when there is something left uh, to be, uh, there is some food left. You know what? And you are very hungry. Your mom will give it to you. Your parents will offer it to you. Right? Something similar happens in the plants. Plants also share when they are deficient. Let me show you what happens. You see the old leaf? See the new leaf? Leaf? Okay. Now what happens? What happens? Nutrients from the older leaves are broken down and transported to the younger leaves because these leaves need to grow. Okay. So this happens in the plants also. Clear? That means I'm talking about the mobile elements. Let's see. Nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, magnesium, NPK and Mg. So nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium and magnesium, these are mobile elements. So older leaves exhibit the deficiency syndrome symptoms. Okay. So older leaves will show the deficiency symptoms because yes, these elements are moving from the older leaves to the newer leaves. So older leaves will have will be deficient in will have lower amounts of these elements. So of course they will show up the deficiency symptoms. And this is how it looks. See yellowing of the leaves. These are the older leaves. But you see it's sacrificing rather. It's, it's giving its own uh, these elements that it can use. The older leaves would have used to the newer leaves. That's amazing plants. Okay. Talking about the immobile elements, elements which do not move, elements cannot be mobilized, structural part of the leaf. What are they? Yes, we just talked about it. So these are the elements which would not move and they are calcium and sulfur. Fine. Younger leaves exhibit deficiency symptoms. Okay. If there is lower amount of calcium and sulfur. So these elements would not move from the older leaves to the newer leaves. So younger leaves, younger leaves will exhibit deficiency symptoms, but the older leaves will have it. You see, these are the younger leaves. Older leaves are quite lush green, but the newer ones, they have yellowing. They show yellowing of the leaves. Fine. So remember, calcium and sulfur, they're immobile elements. Questions can be asked. So Please be very careful about this. Let me talk about this deficiency symptoms. Okay, deficiency symptoms. So you understand this fact that the mobile elements, these nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, magnesium, they will be moving from the older leaves to the newer leaves when required. But calcium, sulfur, they are immobile. They would not move. Clear? So you all know about the macronutrients and their roles. Now let me talk about quickly, quickly let me talk about if these are not present in sufficient amount for the plants, what can be the symptoms? Ready? Okay. Now, prior notification for you is you have to be quick. I'm teaching you how to take notes. So, let's do this. Fine. Get ready. Maximum concentration. Let's start. First, nitrogen. Very essential. Don't write anything else. Whatever I'm telling, just write that point out. Write nitrogen. Don't write nitrogen like this. Just write N. That's it. You are taking shorter notes. Now, beside that, put an arrow. Just write stunt growth. And then write formation of anthocyanin. Now, as I'm explaining, keep noting it down. Noting things down, right? Stunt growth is simple. You know about it. Proper growth would not happen. Anthocyanin, it's a pigment. And if this forms in the stems, the leaves and the petiole, it appears. So what happens? Darkening of the leaves and all these plant structures. It's because of this pigment formation, anthocyanin. Fine. That's if nitrogen is not present in sufficient amount. These are the deficiency symptoms. Well, nitrogen done. Next, phosphorus. Let's see. Phosphorus, premature falling of buds and the leaves. So buds and the leaves, they fall before. Quite before, right? Premature falling of the buds and the leaves. Fine. The vascular tissues do not develop properly. Two points noted. Vascular tissues do not develop properly. Inhibit seed germination. Seed germination will not happen properly. Fine. Once more, I'll keep recalling. 
I will not allow you to forget. Okay, let's see. Stunt growth for nitrogen, right? If it is not present in good amount, formation of anthocyanin, what will happen? Darkening of the plant structures. Next, phosphorus, what we studied, premature falling of the leaves, okay? Vascular tissues would not develop properly and seed germination will be inhibited. Phosphorus, let's move on to potassium now. Very important, you know, loss of apical dominance. Now, what's apical dominance? Apical dominance, you will study later on when I'm talk talking about the plant hormones. But right now, the brief account is, Apical dominance, the apex, tries to grow more, okay? Now, if potassium is not present in good amount, then apical dominance will be lost. That means the apex would not grow properly. Shortening of the internodes, that's simple. You know the internodes. The internodes shorten. Protein synthesis is inhibited. So, it's quite something not desired at all. Protein synthesis is inhibited if potassium is not there. Noted. Yes, let's move on. Calcium. Yes, calcium, very important. Malformation of the young leaves, structural elements, right? And stunned growth. Calcium, if it's not present in proper amounts, malfunctioning, malfunctioning of the young leaves, stunned growth. Got it? I'll just recap, recap these two. Potassium, noted. Loss of apical dominance, shortening of the internodes, and protein synthesis inhibition. Calcium, what happens here if it is not present? In proper amount, malfunctioning of the malformation, not functioning, malformation of the young leaves. Okay, malformation. Leaves are not proper, properly formed. Stunned growth. Okay, next, magnesium. Mg. Okay, magnesium. Write it down quickly. Falling of leaves and buds again. Once more, where did we study this previously? Let's come back. Premature falling of leaves and buds in phosphorus. Now, where we are studying? We are studying here in magnesium, right? Formation of anthocyanin again. So, in older leaves, it becomes brown. Anthocyanin, this pigment formation happen if magnesium is not present in proper amounts. Let's talk about sulfur deficiency symptoms now. Inward rolling of the leaf margins, I showed you, right? That's because of insufficient amount of sulfur. Inward rolling of the leaves margin. See the margins of the leaves. They start rolling inwards. Fine. Reduced nodulation. Wow. In leguminous plants, right? Nodule formation is very important. Do you remember about nitrogen fixation? Conversion of nitrogen, atmospheric nitrogen into forms, which will be utilized by the plants. Yes. So you nodules are very important in legumes. Reduced nodulation in legumes. Let's move on to iron now. Wow. See how important iron is. Inhibition of respiration disintegration of the chloroplast it's like absolutely not desired iron should be present in fact for us also it's very important right so inhibition of respiration and disintegration of chloroplast got this noted you're taking notes right fine great let's move on manganese now manganese gray spots on the leaves that's it questions are asked based on this so don't don't just like there are many other symptoms but these are major questions based on this is asked so focus here fine well gray spots on leaves zinc this is important wherever i'm telling very important please note it down because the probability the probability to ask questions from these areas are more so noted zinc shortening shortened internodes and the leaves Mortal leaf disease of the citrus. Do you see how how the leaf has formed? Okay, this is the mortal leaf disease in the specifically observed in citrus. Chiral disease of the rice. Do you see the yellowing of the leaves of disease of the rice? Right, rice plant. The leaves become yellowish, right? Discolored rather, and the growth is not happening properly. If zinc is not there in sufficient amount, stunned growth. Noted. Copper. Now copper, very important. Again, premature falling off leaves and buds. Die back of citrus. Do you see what has happened? Do you see the leaves? It has become brown, curled, and dried. Fine. Die back of the citrus. Reclamation disease of cereals and legumes. This is mostly observed in case of the cereals and legumes. Okay. See these areas. Do you see yellowing of the leaves? Yes. This happens because of insufficient amount of copper. Okay, also, you know, uh, seed setting is, does not happen properly. If 
copper is not present. Well, let's move on. Boron again very important. Decreased nodulation in legumes. Stem and root tips they die. Flowers are not formed. Quite not so desired thing for the plants, right? Boron, see, flowers are not formed if boron is not present in sufficient amount. Stems and root tips they die off. Decreased nodulation in case of the legumes. What about molybdenum? It is also important. Stunned growth and whiptail of cauliflower. You know, whiptail, see what's happening. The surface area for the leaves reduces. These edges, you see, they've curled a bit, correct? And see, browning of these portions, the leaves, right? That's a whiptail of cauliflower. Happens because of insufficient amount of molybdenum. Fine. Chlorine, again, very important. Note it down. Stunned growth. Swollen root tips and bronze color in leaves. 